All right, guys, it's an awesome winter day in the bluegrass. The sun's out, the sky is blue as far as you can see, and it's a crisp 24 degrees. And I know some of you are thinking, hey, Stoney, 24 degrees, that sounds kind of cold. But in the dog business, especially in Kentucky, 24 degrees is perfect because we have real wet winters and it gets muddy. You know, ask any horse farm, anybody on a horse farm, it just gets so muddy. That's the only thing bad about Kentucky winters, mud. And when it's 24 degrees, like the ground's kind of frozen, not completely, but it's frozen just enough so the mud's not so much of a problem. And 24 degrees is just, mm, just warm enough, right? Where every time I look up, Eli has not run over in the building and is hiding by the heater. <laughs> but I'm not gonna throw Eli under the bus too much. I mean, cause he's just a young fella and he ain't quite got up to Uncle Stoney's uh, old man toughness standards yet. So that's all right. But what we're gonna talk about today is uh, something fun, right? Uh, a few weeks ago, I made a video and in that video, uh, there was a section where I was uh, uh, doing some retrieving work, some marker training with a dog uh, on some little pads. And a lot of people emailed me and asked me about that. And I thought I'd give you a little bit more details. Okay, so now this is what we do. That we call that, come here Gigi, what are you doing? What are you doing with that grass? Let me have that grass. Uh, what we call that is an inductive retrieve, okay? So like I'll have a little dog like uh, Gigi uh, who likes to fetch, you know, and I bring her in. Now before I'll go to working on Gigi's uh, retrieving, I, you know, I get out here and I try to like make sure that I've got some good lines of communication with her. I like to make sure that I'm building a good motivational base with her. And I really want her to understand that access to things that she wants comes through, wait, indirect action. In other words, that's a fancy way of saying that she understands that she has to work with me to get what she wants. Easy. Come on. And uh, so we come out here and uh, like I'm going to work on the retrieving in a second, right? That's why all the other dogs are put up. But I want to go ahead and cover the material that I always cover in my videos where like uh, this is our basics. This is our small challenges course. This is where we teach the dogs our basic vocabulary. Come on. Let's go. Uh, up, easy, wait, good. You know, that kind of stuff, stay. But y'all have seen that a million times, so I don't need to remind you. But what I'm doing here is I'm just priming this dog, wait, easy. I'm priming her so that when we go over here and we start working on fetching, oh, we're gonna skip that right now. Up. Gigi was trying to go to the next part of the, to the next part of the obstacle course there. Sit, stay, ah. But uh, Eli has on slick rubber boots today, and it's ice. It's uh, icy, so uh, we're not making him go back there. I don't want any. <laughs> I don't want any insurance claims today, so we had to skip that part. All right, so look, there we go. So what Gigi just demonstrated to me there is that she is willing and able to work. You know, she's like, hey, yep, yeah, Stony, sure, I can work. So we're gonna come over here. Come on, Gigi, Gigi, Gigi. Come on, little Gigi. Oh my gosh. All right, guys, we're walking down here, and uh, now, so this is my little fetching pin. You've seen my big fetching pin before, and what we do uh, before we move outside to the fetching pins is we kind of get the dogs to where they'll fetch in a corner or a hallway, and what this fetching pin is meant to represent for you guys is a hallway in your home. All right, now, so we got these right here, pieces of uh, fence panel, so that you can see through those walls. But the reason you want to start your fetching off, like in a hallway, is because you don't want like the kids moving around or the cat moving around to distract your dog. Now, when you go to your hallway, if your dog is not being calm and polite and attentive, from my perspective, it's really not the best time to start working on retrieving. So see, I came to my hallway and this dog came right in front of me. She's looking at me and she's trying to use the concept of access through indirect action. In other words, she wants to play fetch and she wants to get some attention and she wants to get some treats. She knows what she wants. What she has to do now is figure out how to get it, right? So over the course of the last few days, I've been teasing her a little bit with this dummy. Oh my gosh, teaser, teaser, teaser. And once she would show some interest in it, oh my gosh, then I would just kind of drop it. So I go to my hallway, I have a dog that's calm, polite, and attentive. I tease her a bit, oh, oh my gosh. And then look what I do. I just kind of drop that dummy. And then when she picks it up and moves towards me, I reward her. Now, you don't have to use this uh, marker for the rewards, guys. You can just do the trade up. Like she brings it to you, you give her the treat, and then you throw the, throw the retrieving item again. I'm gonna use the clicker because it makes it very clear on the videos exactly when I'm happy with what the dog is doing. All right, so I've got my retrieving item. I get my treats ready, and I throw the retrieving item. 
and Gigi goes and gets it. Oh my gosh, what a fine animal. Very nice. That's two repetitions. That's two perfect repetitions. One from close, one from a little farther away. Remember, I'm only after three to five, but if I get something that's really perfect, I might stop even shorter. Oh, what a good dog, Gigi. You're very nice. I mean, that's right there is pretty perfect. Okay, so I would stop there normally. I might do five sessions a day, but I'm going to stop at a point where that dog is looking at me like, hey, Stoney, can we please do that one more time? Never stretch your sessions out to the point where your dog is bored and looking off and, 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 and seems disinterested in the activity. I'm going to do two more repetitions, though, just because Eli wanted to get over here and get a little bit different uh, camera perspective. Teaser, throw it. Oh my gosh, encourager, very nice dog. Trade up, there we go. Make sure like when you're doing your uh, treat work, if you give them a fat treat, you give them time to eat. I'm a teaser, this is our last rep. Oh, and that was the farthest one. Oh my gosh, good Gigi, good smarty. Very nice, she hands it to me, right? Now, the key here guys, is she gonna look at me and say, hey, I would like to do that one more time. That's how I keep these dogs so interested because I always end my sessions on a high note. I always leave my dogs wanting to do it one more time. Okay, Gigi, we gotta stop now. Oh my gosh, and teaser, put it back in my pocket. Okay, now what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna work with Jake for a minute. Now, Jake hasn't been here as long as Gigi. He's a little bit younger, and you can tell that by his demeanor. You know, like, uh, <clears throat> he just is a little bit wild. So now normally what I would do is I would hold off on uh, you know doing this inductive retrieve until this dog was quite a bit more calm and uh, we debated on whether or not to show this dog because I honestly you know I'd rather you not rush the techniques but I know how the world works and Eli was like he was telling me he said dude look at your look at who watches your videos it ain't a bunch of old men like you they're they're not going to wait. As soon as they see that technique, they're going to try it with their dog, whether their dog's eight weeks old <laughs> or 12 weeks old or 16 weeks old. Okay, so what do you do if you got a dog that's not quite as, uh, <laughs> not quite as far along in training, doesn't have as good a foundation as Gigi, right? So that's, that would be this dog. That would be Jake. All right, so let me show you what I mean by not quite as far along. So when we try to do the course with Jake, like I just come over here and I'm like, hey, jump that. And he's like, you mean stand on this <laughs> concrete block? You see, he's just not there yet. We haven't had that much time with him. So we're still helping him through all of these things. It's not that he can't do it. It's just that, you know, he takes a lot of extra effort. So me being uh, 47 years old, you know, I understand that, uh, you know, and just things take however long that they take. You know, and so like if I have to like wait on my retrieving work with this dog for two or three weeks, well, that's fine. I don't mind, you know, but like Eli, from his perspective, he's 21. He's like, dude, what are you talking about? Jake's pretty good. You know, so you got to help him a little bit extra around the course. So what? I want to I want to go ahead and do the retrieving with him. I'm not going to argue. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Right. So for Eli's sake, we're going to do Jake. <laughs> and see, that's what I'm talking about. So for all you young guys out there and girls, you know, whatever. I don't want to want to be judgmental here for all you young guys and girls out there. I would rather you wait. But I understand that y'all are a bunch of Eli's and y'all just can't hardly wait. I would say at least this, at least get your dog <laughs> moving in the direction of understanding that they're supposed to be coming and being still and having good manners, even if you're still having to help them a lot. So we'll take Jake over here and we'll, uh, we'll work with him and I'll kind of show you what you can expect out of a dog that's attention span is not where uh, it should be from my perspective. <laughs> but where <laughs> but it is from Eli's perspective because Eli's ex <laughs> you guys watch this dog work on this course this is what it's like wa walk working with Eli <laughs> <sighs> Eli tries everything and uh <laughs> for about 30 seconds oh my gosh get up here come on Jake you're a pretty good dog get up here oh very nice so Jake's not doing bad I mean he's only you know, 13, 14 weeks old. Can you sit there and stay for any amount of time, Eli? No. <laughs> the only time Eli stays is by the heater. I'm bringing this heater out here and tell Jake, <laughs> pretend you're Eli, stay by the heater, get him in the sun. But you see how uh, Jake's still a wiggle box, is what I'm saying, right? And so that's going to show up over here when you're trying to uh, do your inductive retrieve with him. Okay. But that's all right. We don't mind. 
It's not the end of the world. And that's, what, that's another thing. I mean, it is true. Like, you know, I think I know how to train dogs, right? And of course, I know how to train dogs a thousand times better than Eli. But in all honesty, like, Eli trains a dog just fine, right? He just, he, did, it, <laughs> he, he has to redo more work than it takes, right? So he has to do things a thousand times over and over and over. But he gets it done. So, like, all you young guys out there just waiting to hammer away, look, go ahead, hammer away. I'm not going to argue. You'll get it done. So, where'd, <laughs> where'd Jake go? Oh, there he is. So we're going to tease him a little bit. See if, oh my gosh, would you like to even show any interest in the retrieving item? Oh my gosh, yes you would. And then we're going to tell him, oh, is the retrieving item fun? Oh, yes. All right, so we'll do that a couple days. And, and Eli says he's already been doing that with Jake. So we'll see. Bring him in here, and we're going to toss our little retrieving item. Oh, what are we going to get? Dang, that's not bad. Okay. But you notice the difference between Jake and, uh, and Gigi. You see how Jake grabbed it and he carried it about six or seven inches and dropped it. Okay, that, that's all right. You know, if you want to if you want to work, then just you're going to have to be more patient. For me, I would rather develop the dog's patience so I don't have to be as patient once I'm in this hallway. But if you have a lot of patience or if you don't have any patience at all, either way, right, this will work. Oh my gosh, what a good dog. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reward him for bringing it back towards me, you know, because I know he doesn't have the focus yet or the self-control to bring it all the way back to me. And that's okay. We'll build on that. Oh, come on. That's pretty good. Now, so I'm having to reach up here and get it. Now, if, if he drops it any farther than that, then I'm just going to move up here like this, you know, and I'm going to go to the end of my hallway. Oh, and uh, so that he doesn't have as far to move. Come here, Jake. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to start to try to only reinforce the times that are a little bit closer to me. Come on, come on. You can do it. And this is what you're going to get a lot of. Do you see what I'm saying? Like he's, 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 he gets it. There we go. See how that got close? Now I'm going to move back down my hallway a little bit so Eli can get a good video shot. Good boy, Jake. Very nice. Oh, right there. And that's where I'm going to stop because he brought it all the way back over here to where I didn't have to bend over. Now, what am I getting in this session that I like? I like the fact that he ended the session happy, wanting to do more, and he brought the retrieving item all the way back to me so I didn't have to bend over. I'll go from, you know, if I, if I can get this close, then it won't be long before he'll bring it right to my hand. And what happens is the obedience that we're doing over there on the small challenges course and back there in the fields, it'll translate to better attention span oh, and impulse control on his part. And next thing you know, he'll be handing me this and doing like Gigi, where he sits in front of me and he waits patiently. Okay, but that's pretty good. He wants more and uh, he's having a good time. And I'm going to, oh, look at that. I have to give him one more retrieve, don't I? Okay, Psst, go get it. Oh my gosh, little Jake. Oh, and he brought it all the way back to me again. I was super lucky. All right, let's get somebody else. Okay, guys, now we're going to walk work uh, Lewis, right? Little German short hair pointer. Oh my gosh. Now, Lewis hadn't been here too long, but he's got real strong uh, retrieving instincts. Now, you'll notice with, uh, like, say, these German short hairs, you see them in my videos, and there's a common theme. And that common theme is that they're very athletic and they're very smart, but their attention span, man, it's really hard. Uh, it takes a lot of repetition to get these dogs to have a good attention span and to be able to show high quality impulse control weight under distraction. Okay, so my general rule, like we were talking a minute ago about the difference between the impulse control levels of GG versus Jake, right? These German short hairs, uh, they take a lot of, a lot of extra patience, guys, a lot of extra repetition. So all in all, my general, <laughs> if I run into the plant, my general feeling on it is you want to get them to where they've got some pretty decent obedience before you really start fooling with that retrieving too much. Now, a lot of people don't look at it that way, but that's just how I look at it. Up, up. So we're gonna take Lewis, and if he can make it all the way through this course without me having to do too much, right, then we're gonna take him to the fetching pen just because I thought you guys would get a big kick out of it. Uh, these dogs have gotten real popular here lately. They're very good looking dogs. And so, like, people always, you know, they always comment about them in my videos. Good. So. Good boy, that's pretty decent. 
for a 14 week old dog. Let's see if he has any patience. Now what's gonna work against us up here on this table is it's cold, cold, cold from Lewis's standpoint. And he's like, I do not want to put my bottom down on that table. So I gotta tell him stay. Watch him try to, he's gonna to try to stay and keep his bottom off the table. Uh, but look, okay, so that's pretty good. So we can take Lewis to the fetching pen. Lewis, you wanna go do some fetching? Oh, good dog. Okay, so now what this dog, uh, <clears throat> what this dog is really good at, oh, it's getting really excited about fetching. So I can kind of just tease him a little bit. Oh my gosh, tease him and go to my hallway if I was in the house and toss my fetching item. Oh my gosh, good boy, Lewis. Come on, come on, come on. And do a trade up. And some of them, guys, it really works. That's <laughs> it works that fast. Like you know, dogs fetching is really not something that you teach. You know, you might have friends that you know they brag about teaching their dogs to fetch. Really, it, it kind of category-wise, it's dogs that fetch and dogs that don't fetch. You know, and then of course there's gradations in the middle of that. But some of them, like Lewis or like Denny, the one I'm bringing out next, they just they just are fetchers. You know, so it doesn't. This trade-up strategy works very quickly with them. And. Uh, it, you're literally only looking at about 10 days or two weeks worth of doing trade-ups to have a super solid retrieve where you don't have to do anything except throw the fetching item. So that's three perfect repetitions. But like this dog's so good at fetching, I think I can get five perfect repetitions. Perfect. I'm going to go for one more because I feel lucky. Oh, and I got it. Now, what am I? What do I want to make sure? I want to make sure that after that last repetition, it was a high-quality repetition, and my dog is looking at me, and uh, it's wanting to do it one more time. And now you'll notice there's a helicopter flying. My daughter's over there playing. But what's this dog doing? He has enough attention span, enough impulse control to stay in the fetching pen, right? That's what you're looking for: in attention span and impulse control. I'll give him one more. Oh, what a good dog, Lewis. All right, now we'll go get uh, Denny. Okay, so we're gonna go over here, out in the yard. Okay, and it's a little bit more, a uh, little bit more open, a little bit more distracting area. <clears throat> now, what always gets us here when we're working these short hairs is there's all kinds of birds always in these bushes. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get them to where they're fetching inside, and then we'll come out, we'll put them in a the fetching pen, and they're kind of stuck in there, and they'll fetch. And we'll come over here and start working on fetching, and every time, you know, some birds, they'll go light in a tree right behind Eli, you know, and I'll lose my dog. So that's going to happen to you. I mean, if it happens to me, it's going to happen to you. So don't get, uh, you know, don't get, don't get frustrated. Now, what I'm looking for here, okay, since I don't have that physical barrier to make this dog run in a straight line back to me, like I have to accept that he might kind of bow out one way or another. He might run to me and past me. He might drop this, uh, uh, this retrieving item like too far away from me. There's a lot of things that can go. So I have to kind of, I have to kind of lower my criteria. So I'm not maybe going to get quite as accurate a fetching, you know, uh, out here in this field as I was getting in my fetching pen. And it's just what you have to accept. There's no reason to get upset. There's no reason to worry about it. And, and definitely don't get mad at your dog because, I mean, they're not trying to make you have a bad day. Denny, fetch up. I'm call him. I'm going to bend down. See if he can bring it. Okay, now see, so he brought it to me. He just didn't hand it all the way to me. You know, I can live with that. I mean, this dog's only, you know, 14 or 15 weeks old. Denny, fetch up. Not too bad. Now that right there is too far. I'm not going to, there we go. All right. Now I'd like for him to hand it to me, but if he can get it right over here to where I'm not having to bend down, listen, I can live with that every time. Okay. So now like not good enough, not good enough. Good enough. Oh, well, nope. Get a little closer, dude. <laughs> Good enough. Right. All right. So we're going to go again. And you might say, Stoney, why are you doing the extra repetitions with this dog? Uh, he's just so dang physically strong and fit that he can... Uh, sometimes this... So, so, okay, you know how every rule has its exceptions. Well, sometimes you'll have, like, especially with these short hairs, 
like they're so physically fit and have such high energy expenditure rates and have such good endurance that uh, like before you make a video like this like I, I came straight out of the kennel with them I really probably should have run him around the property a few times and used a pre-fatiguing session to kind of uh, you know kind of uh, burn some of that excess energy off fish very nice good boy come on that's close enough I appreciate it now he's starting to settle into a little bit of a routine. Psh, 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 psh. Ah, 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 ah. Let's tease him a little bit. Ah, get it. Psh, 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 psh. Psh. Very nice. Oh, what a good boy, Denny. I'd like it a little closer. I'd like it a little closer, please. Very nice. Okay, so I ended up with that one in my hand, but it was on after he had dropped it. What I would really like to see in this session is maybe one repetition where he goes out and gets it and brings it all the way back to my hand. Now, I don't know if I'll get it. You know, I'm going to try. Get it. Right amount of vocal inflection. Oh, that's not good enough. Fetch it up. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. Nope. Now see, he's a little bit more interested in this treat right now than he is his fetching item, right? So I'm going to have to wait and be patient. Oh. Okay, that's pretty good. Come on. That's, uh, come on, buddy. Come on, let's give him one repetition. Let's give him one repetition. Good boy. Oh, what a good dog. What a good dog. Oh, that's so close. Oh, it's only going to break his own rules about doing too many fetching times. Ready? Fetch up. Fetch up. Oh, good boy, Lewis. Come on. Oh, Denny. Oh, no wonder you dropped it. I called you the wrong name. Fetch up, Denny. Fetch up. Oh, good boy. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, good dog. There it is. I got it. <laughs> now, look, I broke my own rules there, you know. I just, like I always say, guys, dog training is an art and uh, like sometimes you can break the rules, but if you break the rules consistently, you're not gonna make any progress. And so right there, really, I should have stopped when he brought it back to me pretty close a few times, you know, but I, I wanted to show you what I was really looking for. And what I was really looking for is to get him to be, uh, uh, you know, kind of calm enough and show enough impulse control that he could make it all the way back to me and deliver this retrieving item to my hand. And he did it. I had to stretch out that session a little bit too far. And uh, so, you know, these numbers that I tell you, like uh, three to five sessions a day, three to five repetitions per session, look, all that's just guidelines. It's just guidelines. You know, it's not, those aren't hard numbers. If you get out, you know, and you feel like, you feel like you're going to get it, you know, go with your gut instinct because sometimes you are going to get it. As long as at the end of the session, the dog is still looking at you. He's still interested. He still wants to, he, he still wants to, to, to engage in the activity with you. Okay. You didn't mess your session. All right, guys. So this is my new little project, Mr. No Name. <laughs> and you might say, well, Stoney, why'd you name him Mr. No Name? Well, I didn't. Uh, it's just the older I get, the harder, you know, the harder I have, uh, a time of finding a good name for a dog so nowadays it's taken me a couple of months sometimes to get him a good name but what I want you to understand is I'm going through the same thing you're going through you know I want my dog to grow up and and uh, be able to show off I want him to be to, to mind well I want him to fetch well right I mean I had a lot of pressure on me I'm you know a professional dog trainer people come out uh, you know they want to see my dog mind but it's a process guys and what I've learned over the years is to not rush that process okay enjoy the process because I'm 47 and I never thought I would be 47 okay so don't get stressed with your puppy when you're working in the corner right and they're not doing it right just laugh about it when you're working in the hallway and they're not doing it right just just laugh about it you know and 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 redo your routine until you can get it right okay whether it takes you six months or two months or 12 months what's it matter right I mean you're not getting paid for this you're not you know there's nobody there's nobody tells you you have to get it just enjoy the process because I can tell you the most common complaint amongst dog trainers is how quickly the time goes so enjoy your time with them enjoy the process don't get fixated on the results if you enjoy the process the results will come every time okay so that's my new project now let me go over here and kind of show you what you're working towards for your own life I'm gonna walk over here And I'm going to call my older dog, Henry. Y'all have seen him on the videos. Henry, heel. 
and Henry's going to run right over here, and he's going to get in this position, right? And the reason he's going to get in this position, guys, and he's going to ignore Mr. No Name, is because he has internalized the concept of access through indirect action. And what I mean by Henry has mastered the concept of access through indirect action is he, he understands that if he wants to come over here and engage in retrieving activities, then he has to be able to ignore Mr. No Name. Daddy, what, baby? Pegasus, it's on the eye. Rescue your Pegasus from the eyes? Okay, sure, baby. Go on over there and stand by him. I'll be over there in a second to get him. <laughs> now, that's what I mean about enjoying the process, guys. I've got a 19-year-old son, and uh, back in the day when I was making videos and he was little, if he would have come over here and interrupted me during a video, uh, we'd had had to cut because me and him would have had a little come to Jesus meeting is what they used to call it where I'm from but uh, I'm a little older now and I'm more mellow so my daughter comes over here and uh, you know she's a little girl so she hasn't she hasn't mastered that concept of waiting patiently now hopefully when she's a big girl she won't be coming and whining and asking me to do stuff for her but right now she's a little girl I'm just gonna try to enjoy the process and look at Henry like Henry is just waiting here calmly, attentively, politely because he's been through it thousands of times and he knows there's no fetching until I get to the point in the day where I can do some fetching with him, right? So now, as a result of him living up to his end of the deal, which is waiting calmly, politely, attentively, right? I'm going to throw his retrieving item, right? So he knows we've played this game a thousand times. I get out his retrieving item and I tell him to stay. Then I throw the retrieving item. Then I say, Henry, and he goes and gets it, right? Okay, what a good dog. Now watch what he does. He runs right back over here and he gets right back into this spot and he goes to, goes to, to play in his role again. And what's his role? His role is to wait patiently to show me that he has impulse control, to show me that he respects me enough to not interrupt my day by being pushy, right? By trying to boss me into this activity. He knows that if he'll just sit here and wait calmly, attentively, and politely, then I'll tell him to stay and I'll throw his retrieving item. Then I'll say, Henry, and he can go get it, right? And we'll play that all day. And we've made enough videos together, me and Henry, that he understands that uh, after two or three repetitions of this, then we're just going to throw some, some fun dummies and uh, probably go take the four-wheeler out back on the farm. Okay, So that's what I want for you guys. All right, so get out there. Be consistent. Be persistent. Stick to the game plan. Focus on making incremental progress. And before you know it, guys, before you know it, I mean, it happens in the blink of an eye. It seems like forever, but it's really a blink of the eye. You'll have a dog just like Henry. All right, good luck, guys. Good training. Now this is what a dog trainer slash dad slash homeschooler <laughs> principal does all day. You see, my daughter has got her Pegasus out here in the middle of the pool and the pool is uh, iced over. Uh, luckily, she didn't think that uh, she was a, <laughs> a professional ice skater though and get up on here because that's not too sturdy. And uh, I would have had to interrupt the video to come over here and interrupt my beautiful baby girl. Here you go, Charlotte. You're welcome.